engineering has been an aspect of life since the beginnings of human existence. Our great ancestor used to create temporary settlements with basic materials like stone, twigs, oak wood, plaster of clay, and straw. However, they lived in nomadic practice or transfer from one place to another as seasons change where they could graze for their basic survival, especially their food and other livestock. Nomadic people traditionally travel by animal, canoe, on or on foot, and animals such as camels, horses, and alpaca. Between 4,000 and 5,000 BC in ancient uh, Egypt and Mesopotamia or what we call the ancient Iraq, humans started to abandon a nomadic existence causing a need for construction of shelter, religious temples like ziggurat, and developing wheels and sailing as mode of transportation. The construction of pyramids in Egypt circa 2700 to 2500 BC might be considered the first instances of large, inst uh, large structure constructions. Imhotep, the first documented engineer, built a famous step pyramid for King Djoser, located at Saqqara Necropolis. Machu Picchu from, of, per, of Peru, built around uh, 1450 at the height of the Inca Empire, is considered an engineering marvel. It was built in Andes Mountains, assisted by some of history's most ingenious water resource engineers. The people of Machu Picchu built a mountain top city with running water drainage systems, food production, and stone structures so, so advanced that they endured for over 500 years. A book called Vitruvius de Architectura was published at 180 in Rome and survived to give us a look at engineering education in ancient times. It was probably written around 15 BC by the Roman architect Vitruvius and dedicated to his patron, the emperor Caesar Augustus, as a guide for building projects. One of the earliest examples of scientific approach to physical and ma mathematical problems applicable to civil engineering is the work of Archimedes. Uh, in the 3rd century BC, um, including the Archimedes principle, which underpins our understanding of buoyancy and practical solutions such as this Archimedes screw. Brahmagupta is an Indian mathematician used arithmetic in 7th century AD based on Hindu-Arabic numerals for excavation or volume computations. John is Smithon. He is the first man to call himself a civil engineer, began as an instrument maker, and his design of the Eddystone Lighthouse, 1756-1759, with its interlocking masonry, was based on craftsman's experience. Smithon's work was backed by thorough research, and his services were much in demand in 1771. He founded the Society of Civil Engineers, um, also known as the Smithonian Society. Its objective was to bring together experienced engineers, entrepreneurs, and lawyers to promote building of large public works. Public works such as canals, railways, and to secure the parliamentary powers necessary to execute their schemes. Well, first, their meetings were held during parliamentary sessions. The term civil engineering was also coined during the 18th century as opposed to military engineering.
James Brindley began as a millwright and became the foremost canal builder of the century. John Rennie was a millwright apprentice who eventually built the new London Bridge. And Thomas Telford is a stonemason, became Britain's leading road builder. The beginnings of civil engineering as a separate discipline may be seen in the foundation in France in 1716 of the Bridge and Highway Corps, out of which 1747 grew the École National des Ponts et Chaussettes, or the National School of Bridges and Highways. Its teachers wrote books that became standard works on the mechanics of materials, machines, and hydraulics and leading British engineers who learned French to read them. The École Polytechnique was founded in Paris, 1794, and the Bau Academy was started in Berlin, 1799. But no such schools existed in Great Britain for another two decades. In 1818, a small group of young engineers met in a London coffee shop and founded the Institution of Civil Engineers, or ICE, the world's first professional engineering body. They had hope that lots of engineers from different engineering backgrounds would join the institution. The first president of ICE was Thomas Telford, who was nicknamed the Colossus of Rhodes. His important role was getting the organization's royal chapter in 1828. Using his political and social connections, Telford helped bring in many new members from the UK and overseas. Um, their chapter was updated by Queen Elizabeth II in 1975, which gives ICE the status as the leading institution for the civil engineering profession and also, there were similar developments. By the mid-19th century, there were civil engineering societies in, main, in many European countries and the United States. And the following century produced similar institutions in almost every country in the world.